Hello everybody, welcome to Sarah Butchered Lions YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you've landed on this video. Um, please follow me on Twitter, Sarah Butchered Lions, and please follow me on Sarah. In this video, we're going to be building, we're not going to be building, well I have got a bit of ETH, um, a bit of ETH, a fair bit of ETH, to buy a new player, and I'm going to need your guys' help. Um, we're going to be discussing how to build a gallery and how I built my gallery. And if you could leave in your comments where your galleries are at or what your plans are for Sarah's sort of future. Lots of things going on. Got lots of little top tips because I've been researching the market today. And it seems like the European players are dropping. Um, obviously because there's probably only about 10 to 15 games left in some of the European divisions, which always happens. Um, and that was the same as the, the American, I've been here long enough now, to understand that the MLS, when that tailed off, the players just plummeted in price. Now the MLS has come back, they exploded in price. So maybe, leave it a few more weeks, but this could be a really good time to invest in European players. Um, so predominantly in this video, we're going to be running through my gallery... Um, sort of talking about my gallery and where I'm going and I'm in a really sticky situation with what to spend this ETH on. Um, we'll get to it maybe a bit later on in the video. So, why do I have six goalkeepers? Um, predominantly because I plan to enter about five to six teams every game week. Um, the reasoning behind these goalkeepers... Um, I'm going to talk you through probably each player one by one. Sean Johnson is my MLS goalkeeper. Um, I might even go into depths of how much. It'd be quite interesting to see how much I bought these cards for and what they're worth now. So at the time, I picked them up for 0 0.35 ETH. Um, and that was, I think, three months ago. Um, maybe not even that long ago. I've got a bit, I'm a bit bunged up, so I've got a hot drink. To keep me going. Um, but let's quickly see when we picked him up. So I picked him up two months ago uh, for 0 0.35 ETH. He is now currently worth, and this was so this was about a month or a month and a bit before the season started. Wow. So he is now at one ETH. Um, let's just double check that was correct. Yes, yeah, so 0 0.35 ETH. Again, ETH has crashed probably a bit since then anyway. Um, but predominantly, if that's an ETH profit. And even, um, I've made a fiat profit of 2x probably, and an ETH profit of about 3x, which is very decent. Again, since I bought him, the prices of um, MLS goalkeepers exploded. So, that's my reasoning behind holding Sean Johnson. He is in my MLS team. Um, so, say for this game week, um, I have been actually playing around. This would be my MLS team. Um... And we're going to go and keep diving into different reasons. So, uh, Maduka Okai um, was another recent purchase. Um, well, he's a fairly more recent. So, on the 20th um, of the 2nd, I got him from Super Swami. Um, I traded <laughs> Awiar and 0 0.45 ETH for Okai. Um, Awiar is now worth... I think he was about the same at the time. Um, maybe a bit more, a bit less. He was 0. Point, let's call him 0. 0.29. Plus, um, plus that, so that would be 0. 0.74. And the Koyi is worth... He hit a big score for a goalkeeper the other day. Um, and the reason I bought him is... Because he's going to Watford, and I think Watford will go down. And if he's in the Championship, he'll be a monster, monster under-23 keeper in the Championship. And under-23 keepers are really hard to come by. He's actually selling another one. Um, the same lad. I think this guy's a bit of a monster, actually. Yeah, he's got 75 super rares. <laughs> so, yeah, fair play. Um, I might buy the other one off you. I'm pretty convinced he's going to rocket in price. Because under-23 rare keepers are hard to come by. <laughs> So that's the same as Costa. Costa was quite a cool story. Um, I bought the other goalkeeper from Porto. I've forgotten his name at the moment. Uh, Marchesin. At the very... Before the season even started. Um, was in bed scrolling through who's going to start for Porto this season. I bought Marchesin. 
and I sold him for about 100 quid loss in a panic that I saw this article that um, Costa might start. So then I went out and picked Costa. I had to buy him from the market because there weren't many on there. I just bit the bullet and paid quite a bit more than my chessing was worth. And at the time, if he didn't play, it would have been quite a lot. So I've gone for 0 0.4, which was about 600 quid at the time. Um, and he is probably my best um, sort of profit to buy. I mean, it's not profit until you sell, but I've gone for 600 quid, 660 quid. He is now worth... 4,600 quid. So it's about a £4,000 profit, which is uh, quite tasty. And that was all down to just a bit of research. Um, and I think you can easily do the same with under 23 goalkeepers. Um, if you can find some that aren't in the starting lineup and on the bench and their main keeper gets injured or gets sold or the under 23 keepers in favour, it's definitely worth picking him up if you can see them profit margins. Um, so that's what happened with Costa. Um, Paul Lopez was another early, early pickup. I think I got him. I think he's another one of my best trades. Um, but again, this was just due to being an early adopter, probably. Um, so we're going to pop back into the goalkeeper section and head on into Paul Lopez. 155 quid, which is 0 0.22 ETH at the time. So it shows you um, the value of ETH back then. I mean, I wish I'd just loaded up on ETH back then. Um, and he is now worth about £2,000, I think. Um, he's been a solid keeper for Marseille this season. There was a bit of a worry. He actually dropped down. When I first bought him, he was at Roma, and then he wasn't in favour at Marseille when he first went. Mandanda wasn't. I was a bit worried. But luckily, he's now the starting keeper. Um, so having all of these starting keepers is amazing. Herodeki, um, I bought him because I needed a national goalkeeper. And currently, Costa's not in the Portuguese team. Paulo was in the Spain team. I didn't have Akoi and I didn't have Johnson, and Johnson isn't national anyway. So I needed a national keeper for my midweek, and when all the leagues are off and national comes, he's the Finland keeper. So that's why I bought him. He's also plays for Bayer Leverkusen, um, who are in midweek competitions in Europa League and stuff. So that was very handy. Um, and then that was the same reason for Sillison, really. He was the Netherlands keeper. He's been plagued with injuries. Um, the predominant reason was I needed a national keeper. And that leads me on to the big question over all of this. Once I've relayed all the players and what would you do, um, I, I'm tempted to buy Thomas Strakosha, um for Lazio. I mean, the other keeper's Pepe Reina. He's fallen out of favour and he's 39 now, so I don't think he'll be back in the team. Uh, Stratikosha has played really well recently um, and I just think he's I think he's good value I don't need a keeper and that's my issue because I'd rather spend this ETH on a really good SO5 player who would benefit my under 23 or champion Europe team but I'm planning for the future and I'm planning for the Europa Nations League, Europa Nations League, and he is goalkeeper for Albania. Having a international goalkeeper is fucking hard to come by. Um, so you can never have. I don't think on Sarre you can ever have enough goalkeepers. They're always a bloody nightmare. Having Silicon out means I've only got five goalkeepers, and it might it might look massive to you, and it is. It's I've done very well. Um, I was a big early adopter, um, but it's hard work holding goalkeepers. If he falls out of form and Marchessing comes in, he would just lose half of his value straight away. Um, or Paul Lopez goes and breaks his leg. It, it's hard. It's tough, tough work. I've probably lost a bit on Sillison since I bought him, actually. But hopefully he'll be coming back. He's probably a good one. Again, don't take any advice uh, financially or anything. He might be a good one. If you need a rare goalkeeper... He will be diving straight back into this Valencian team. If you can pick him up for 718 quid, and there's a potential he might be back in goal for Netherlands, I, th I think that's a great price. It's only two months ago as we went for 1,300. Um, 18 hours ago, 611. Crikey, someone's got a deal there. Is that on the, on the market? Yeah, that's decent. So, yeah, that's my goalkeeper holdings. Um... 
If, you, if you've been following my journey, the way I've got some ETH, I've made a few transfers recently, but we'll probably get onto them actually in a minute. I've basically sold my Pyre. I sold... Uh, who else did I sell? Can I... Latest signings. Can I go on latest? Um, I bought in Solaire. This ladder was just jammed in a in a trade for this uh, for Solaire. No, it's, I don't know what it was for. I didn't want him anyway, but the guy wouldn't take him out of the deal. He was worth one pound, so then he bought him back to get him out my uh, <laughs> out my gallery because it would have been frustrating. Um, and t -t -t manager stats. This is all quite interesting. So my one month uh, average roster value ETH history. I joined um, obviously. The 5th of October 2020, and I fucking sold out. Um, I had players like Sane, I had some huge players, and sold out, invested all this other cryptocurrency when I was learning crypto and everything, then slowly came back, um, and luckily did, because obviously Serez just exploded since. Um, can I see my recent sales? I probably can in here, so I'll just keep you updated with what's recently gone on today. I've had a bit of a, um, a clear out, to be quite honest with you. So, offers sent, um, and it'll be offers received. I very rarely sell players straight for the market. So this was it. I sold Pyatt for 0 0.5333. Um, that was way under his value, but I'm just concerned with the way that European... I was just doing a bit of scouting earlier on. The way that European cards are going to drop quite quickly now... And with his age, um, so he's already won now for 0 0.56. I was, I had mine up for 0 0.57 and then sold him 0 0.5333. Um, There's about a 60, 70, 80 quid difference in that. But I just wanted him out. I just think he's 34. He's one of the best scoring champion Europe players. So I'm going to miss him in my SO5 team. But I replaced him with Soler, who was... Um, almost <clears throat> about 300, 400 quid off. And his SO5 scoring is getting better and better. He takes penalties. He's, he's everything to Valencia. Um, and I just think, because he's 25, he's going to have all this utility. Once we get to the end of the season, that Piat card scares me. He really scares me. Because I've got Soler for an, 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 in his peak for another five years. Piat, I just think, he's been playing Unreal this season. 34-year-old in a, in a French league, how much game time is he going to get next season when he's 35? Um, and I just thought I'd needed to cash in at the top. I think that's always a good thing to do. Um, so that's what happened. Um, I also sold... I've forgotten already now. I think my uh, <laughs> memory's jogging. Um, if you're still here, please make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter um, and on Serer. <coughs> Offers received I've also sold my Xerxy for 0 0.673 which is 1300 and again I should have waited till he was back in form but I just wanted to invest um, elsewhere that actually looks really good now because he's up for 1346 um, and I managed to get a bit more than that so 1393 so that's great work and I've also sold my other under-23 um, goalkeeper, Kujakov. Um, Gulherme, or whatever his name is, is going to be coming back into this team. Oh, sugar, is he? He was up for 1,570. What did I sell him for? I don't think he'll sell for that. He's a big concern because he's going to drop out of this team when Gulherme comes back. He'll be playing for the next two to three games. But again, I'd rather have sold him. I have a Koi and Costa. That's enough under 23 goalkeepers when they're that price. Um, and when I only enter two under 23 divisions, the um, the under 23 rare and the under 23 rare pro I enter. So I only need two rare uh, goalkeepers. So <clears throat> that's where I'm at. And that's where the ETH came from, basically. So Kajakov... Pyre and Xerxy, my reward um, for about two weeks ago, which was a lovely reward. Um, and here I am, sat with this ETH and Carlos Soler. 
And I have recently picked up, well not recently, about three hours ago, picked up this Frankie and Meyer. He's only played two games. The MLS has just come back. He scored massively. Picked him up for about 0.213 I've picked him up for. Um, he's like 20. He takes uh, set pieces. I needed another MLS midfielder. Um, and yeah, I mean, look at them two. I mean, I know he's, he can't carry that on. And if he does, he's going to be pop in price. And he's also got under 23 utility. So really nice pickup, I think that is. Um, and I couldn't really, after his two scores like this, I know it's prima donna and anything can happen. Um, but I still think that's a good price. And really, if he hits another two scores like that, for an under 23 who's playing in the MLS, I really think he could hit a £1,000. He could double in price if he hits another two scores like that. So, let's dive back into um, the defenders now in my um, roster. <coughs> We're going to head into my players, which I seem to have lost. So, defenders. Uh, I have the most... This is my biggest... Um, Position holdings. Again, two of them are duplicates. So I've got two Tellers and two Dig Igor Davies. We'll get into that reason. Um, but we'll talk through these one by one. The reason I have the most defenders is because I think they're the easiest to get high scores with. Um, and they're the cheapest to get high scores with. I like to play two defenders in my SO5 teams. Probably going to make a bad example of this um, now. I'll try and find a team... Well, I've already entered. So, Herodeki, Kulabali. I would I very rarely play two forwards. And again, I'm, I'm going to make a mockery of this because I think I've got two forwards in here. No, just one forward in there, two midfielders. Because I find... I like AA scores, all-round scores uh, with players. To so my champion Europe team, um, we've got two midfielders there. It looks like I'm very two midfielder heavy in these, which is good. Um, I, I very rarely go with two strikers because having two strikers hit two decisives at the same time is hard work. Midfielders, if they hit decisive, they usually have a good all-round as well, so that hits the 70-80 mark. And then I think defenders are a really solid, solid scoring, um, cheaper option. So, for instance, DeLitt here, um, his SO5 scoring... <clears throat> is unbelievable for a defender and he doesn't need decisives so to hit these scores that cost me um, like 2,000 he cost about 2,000 pound um, to go and have a forward do that in champion Europe so I'd rather have two delits or someone like two delits as a defender than trying to find uh, say it's under 23 as well to have an under-23 uh, forward who can do that, do a consistent scores in the greens like that will set you back double or treble the price, to be quite honest with you. I mean, let's look at Rafael Leal, someone I am looking to pick up. Um, he's about the same, probably, price as Delict, but again, he won't be as consistent because he's going to need decisives to hit these scores where Delict doesn't. So that's my reasoning in behind um, holding these defenders um. <coughs> so Dallo was picked up I'm, I'm very happy with the pickup I'm disgusted with the way Man United treat him um, he hasn't played now for four games they played Wamba Saka against Man City who is horrendous he's the worst right back in the league how Dallo hasn't come into the team he hit some really nice form I bought him off the market when I thought he was going to be the new starting right back for Man United. Uh, the, the another reason I bought him is because they can't mint any more cards because they haven't got the Premier League license yet. Go and watch my uh, video on the Premier League license um, to see where I think that will be going. Um, so, I'm really infuriated with Man United, but I think he's a great long-term hold. Um, he has international experience. I know he's got Cancelo to contend with and another good uh, right back or left back but he does end up in the Portuguese side quite a bit there are only a fair amount of cards because again he's at Man United at the moment they can't mint any more um, I think that's a good pickup. Um, I don't want to spend this EF on doing what I've recently been doing and trying to monopolise a market because that's gone wrong with my Davies but predominantly 
I picked up that Dallo um, as he, he was sort of taking a few set pieces here and there. He was really scoring well when he, when he was in. And, and now he's got four DMPs in a row because fucking Wan-Bissaka has knocked him to the bench. But I still think that's a very good purchase. I've lost 200 quid on him at the moment. I have no utility out of him. He's also under 23. When he gets back into that team, which can't be far away, I don't know how he's not in the team. I think he's a great hold. Uh, Delit was a trade. Head to probably my most heated moment um, on YouTube. Um, there was a big controversy when I won a Gavi for three thousand pound. Didn't realise it was a shirt number and sold him um, in, in this video. And then the most controversial trade probably explains what happened. Um, and I picked up Delit and Mallon, and then they got up. They've gone and won me a Xerxes recently and gone up in price. So I actually did better than holding Gavi even though there's lots of controversy there. Um, <clears throat> so De Ligt was a no-brainer, under 23. Juventus scores SO5 well. Um, he just has to come into the team. So that's Saar I've had for ages, sort of a, a mini stack with Paolo Lopez in goal. It's been a frustrating hold. He does um, have a few DMPs. I don't know why that happens. There was a lot of transfer talk. I was hoping it would go to someone like West Ham or somewhere. Um, but again, worth a hold. Daviv, I bought two of them. I was going to monopolise the market. This was before Russia, Putin decided to start World War III. Um, and now, mainly one of the reasons was because he would have played international, but Russia won't be playing any international football ever again, or for a very, very long time. I picked both of them up for like 620 quid. He's a great scoring player. And that's another reason, like the main reason I bought him from SO5 team. So he's not completely useless unless um, Opta pull out of scoring that league. Um, so it's not a big loss. I can use him in my all-star and my normal in the 23 teams when they've got an easy game and he does score well. So, But I tried to monopolise the market without World War Three with that 75 and he would have played Russia. I think he would have doubled up in price. I had a chance to and I would have sold one of them and made a profit and kept the other. But it's all going to bit tits up. There's one Jones... Um, was sort of a punt. I don't know too much about the MLS, but I need an MLS defender. Saw these scores and I thought, yeah, he's exactly what I need. Nice, consistent, and 23 uh, defender. So he dived in. He was also uh, tapping on the door for the USA team. So he came in. Botman I've held for ages. Um, ages and ages. He was one of my first ever purchases, I think. Uh, we'll head to thingy three, no, two... Um, here you are, Botman, 467. Um, literally bang on with the ETH um, price at the time. So ETH was exactly £1,000 at the time. Um, let's see what price he is now. He's probably doing quite well because he's come back in the team very well. Um, yeah, so I'd only have made like a double ETH profit, but I've made like a triple um, fiat profit. Um yeah, great player, great scorer, under 23 for another few seasons. Probably going to leave Lille. Um, a nice, nice hold. Um, Ibanez, I think he's really good as an under 23. He's just coming back from injury now. Great hold for your under 23 teams. He's actually not too expensive. And Roma, I don't know if they're still in it, but they were in the Europa League. I think they are. Europa League or the Europa Conference League. So he plays the midweek games, um, which I think is great. Badi Ashal have been really, really unfortunate with. He's been injured for so long. I bought him for a high price. Um, but these were the scores he was knocking in. And then he fucking ripped his hamstring there and ripped his hamstring here because they brought him back too early. Um, frustrating hold, but probably one of the best under 23 defenders in the game if he gets going. Um, also a monster. Absolutely massive bloke. Colour Valley. I think he's got like a 10% XP bonus. I've had him on that long. Um, lovely hold, consistent scorer. Sertel, I was looking for a cheap under 23 defender who was playing for one game week um, and ended up just keeping him. Did a bit of research, he's tapping on the door for the Turkey team. Uh, I think Galatasar, I've loaned him out to one of the crappy teams in the in the league, but he scores well, so I'm holding him. Tolkien as a recent purchase, did a bit of research on him on Twitter. <laughs> this is the mad world we live in now, research on Twitter. Um, He's playing. He's in the starting lineup for his MLS team. 
Um, really sharp player and no bad words have been said about him. He was on set pieces for a bit as well, so picked him up for a heftiest price, but he's under 23 in MLS um, utility. is very useful. Pine's a bit of a straight in one. He looked um, like he was going to be a solid scorer. Didn't start the first game, um, and, which is bad news. He was on the bench. And then he came on for the last eight minutes in the last game. So I'm hoping he dives back into the team. But I have made a loss on him at the moment. I was hoping for these sort of scores and a sub sort of defender um, for my MLS team. But hasn't paid off so far. But luckily he has made a sub appearance there. So let's hope he can find his way in the team. Tellez was exactly the same reason as Dallow. Absolutely furious. He was playing really well for Man United. Overshaw. Went to Brazil. Hit a big score in Brazil as well because he's back in the Brazil side there. Um, ever since, And then he got COVID. And then he's come back and played, but he's been shit because Man U is shit and they got destroyed there. Um, and yeah, just another frustrating one. I think he'll leave Man United, so I'm just going to hold on to these two. But... Um, yeah, I did pick him up to try and duplicate the market because there's so little cards of these. If he started scoring really well and people wanted to pick him up, he would have just flown up in price so quickly if people wanted him. Um, and then this lad, I won in the reward. I'm still trying to sell him. If anyone wants him, they can have him for not much at all. If you want to have, just have yourself a super rare. Um, he is up for 78 quid. I will lower that if you want him. Um, he was the key. I like, looked him up on Twitter and he's the captain for Elcho. I think he's just have a kid, um, but he should be back in the team soon, so <coughs> <coughs> hopefully I'll pick up a few scores and I'll be able to sell him on. Um, all right, so that's the midfielders, uh, midfielders, defenders, let's head on into the midfielders. So we've talked um, about Frankie, oh, sorry, I'm just watching the um, cricket and we seem to be Getting a bit destroyed, early doors. Um, Frankie and Meyer, under 23, scores well. Um, recent move he got. Um, and again, I needed another midfielder because my other midfielder, Marcelo Moreno, was injured at the start of the season, so he's only just phasing his way back in. So I need a bit of cover. He just looked like a good price at the time. Again, only two, um, two scores, but two massive scores. And this was, this was his current form before. Then he wasn't in favour in his old team. And then he's recently moved to New York. Um, has he always been at New York? Maybe he has always been at New York. I thought he got a move. But anyway, if he can start hitting them, and then that all-round scores look decent. He's got two decisives because I think he's on set pieces. But that all-round score excited me as well. So that was the reason behind his purchase. He will help for my MLS and my under-23s. Uh, Yazici, I bought him about a year ago. He was tapping, he was starting for Lille. He was played for Turkey because I was looking for international players at the time as well. Um, and now he's gone to the Russian League. I was excited for that. That was before World War Three. But he has, and I've just read an article, and he's staying in Russia until the end of the season. So he will knock up some big scores in Russia because he's a good player. He takes all the set pieces. If you're looking for someone from now to the end of the season, he was going to score big in all in All Star or um, Challenger. You can pick him up for about three hundred and fifty quid or something. And yeah, I I just think he's a good purchase. Twenty five. He's going back to Lille at the end of the season. We'll probably leave Lille. Um, how much? I did have him on sale at the start, but now I'll take. Oh, actually, I'm going to take him off. I'm going to keep him. Three hundred ninety three is too cheap. Um, so yeah, he is going to be staying. I think he's a good. Good player to hold. Um, Szymanski, I think he's a great purchase. His scoring is one of the best. I think he's like the third or fourth best midfielder scorer in the under-23s. I think he's staying in Russia until the end of the season. He's going to find his way back into the Poland team. He will leave and hopefully go to like the Scottish League or some other weakish league. And he'll still put up these scores. For an under-23 player, I think he's a must-hold um, as a midfielder alternative. Um, <clears throat> who else are we going in for now? Demibai held back from ages and ages ago. Um, picked him up for like 100 quid. I think I think he was my oldest purchase now I've sold um, Payet because he was my oldest purchase. Let's go to three. 39 quid. 
One year ago. Take me back. I could be a millionaire if, I, if only I knew what I knew. Um, really good hold. Consistent scorer. Plays midweek. Um, he's good for like an all-round... He's an all-round monster, really. He just he hits nice, and when he hits a decisive, then he hits a big score. So he's a great one to hold. Um, Carlos Soler, most recent purchase, swapped him for Payet. I've already explained that. Um, younger, cheaper, will hopefully hit some great scores and turn into your your Payet. Basically, I thought that form is basically what Payet was doing. Um, so yeah, let's hope he can replicate that. I think for 300, 400 quid cheaper with Pirates Age, I think that was a bit of a no-brainer. Zachary and bought before World War Three. Hopefully, it was going to be my international superstar for Russia. Um, again, he's playing in a crap league at the moment. Hopefully, he gets a move at the end of the season, gets out of Russia, um, and performs on the worldwide stage. But it's unfortunate he won't be able to play unless Russia do something with their team. I won't get my international utility out of him, which was well, half the reason I purchased him. So I probably lost a bit on that. Chong was a purchase because Birmingham City are my favourite team. He got he actually got a really bad injury and was out for loads and loads of games. But he's just back, which is exciting. And he scored for my team uh, when he first came back. So, pleasure to hold. He hasn't done as well as I thought. Um, but he is back now and he has played really well. Um, so, yeah. Bit of a bit of a no brainer. I just wanted someone from my own club, Birmingham City, and he was he was going, and I was excited to sort of have to pick him up. Um, Guedes was a great purchase. Needed some international utility. I think I needed him for one game. I think there was hardly any games on the midweek, and I went up and picked him out. He's been in great form since. Uh, if you want to know a heads up, he's out for this uh, weekend fixtures with a flu, like I've got probably. Um, so yeah, he was good, and he's a good scorer for a midfielder. He needs a decisive. He doesn't get a great all-round score, but he's been hitting a few decisives. And I, yeah, he looks sharp. I like him as a player. Under, I bought a while back. Uh, that was before the season started. Actually, expected to only a few weeks. That's not good. I put him on my under twenty-three midweek team. I think. Um, frustrating. He's always injured. He's on and off all the time. I don't know what he's must have made of paper. He's got a few DMPs here and there, but he's been scoring really well for Marseille, and he plays uh, national. What did I pick him up for? 247 quid at the start. That was July, so the start of the season, because I saw him going to Marseille. These are where you can make your moves, because I knew he was always a sharp player for Leicester. Um, he didn't make it into the team, but there you are. That was a lovely little profit. And he's a midfielder that can put up good scores for under 23s, which is hard to come by. So if you do your research before the season starts, or like July when everyone's not buying these um, Champion Europe players, great pickup. Fabian Ruiz might be one of my other best purchases from way, way back. Um, let's dive into him. <coughs> he was he must have been yeah what, 109 quid. Um, so again, almost tied to the ETH when it was a £1,000 mark. He is the GOAT. He is so, so good. And also, they still haven't done any new Napoli cards, so he's hard to come by. He's actually gone down a lot in price. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to get a big move. If he moves to Barcelona, he will be an SO5 god. And I think he's the sort of player that could, could do that. Um, so yeah, very happy with him. He's helped me win a few rewards. His all-round scores are unreal. Marcelo Moreno, or Marcelino Moreno, <laughs> I'm going mad, um, was a purchase for my MLS team. Um, just looks looks a solid SO5 scorer for a midfielder. Just waiting for him to come back into the team here. Oh, we actually did something against Atlanta. And that was the first game of the season when he came on for about 20 minutes. And then they're obviously easing him back in. But if he can hit them scores, that'll be a very good MLS midfielder. Elmas, um, this is quite an interesting one. I saw he was a monster for Macedonia. So he was predominantly picked up for um, for midweek games. Look at these Macedonia scores. When he plays for Macedonia, 78, 75, um, 69. For, like, all good all round. And having international players is hard to come by. And then he found his way into the team more and more. Um, he's hit some poor scores recently. That score was when I had my super rare one in 
an under twenty three competition which won me my Gavi. And so he has a he's a, I hold a place in my heart for him, to be quite honest with you. And I think with Insigne leaving and him just getting a bit older, he'll get better and better. Hopefully find his way into the team more and more. Um <clears throat> I was debating selling one of them, but I've just kept both. So I bought the super rare version for zero point. Is that one? How much did I get him for? Zero point six two, which is two thousand pound at the time. I think his normal rare card now goes for. Again, I think prices have dropped recently. Yeah, so he's back down to five hundred. He was going for eight hundred or nine hundred at the time, and that emphasises to selling players when they're in form. Um, there hasn't been any new <coughs> Super Rares minted. Not many people, no one's selling him. So who knows what he's worth. I've probably made a profit on his Super Rare, but I'm going to hold him because it's good to have a under-23 midweek player who is a Super Rare who can score really well for his country. Um, where else are we at? Salamakers was a disaster. He was the same reason as me purchasing Elmas because I thought he'd play for Belgium. He was starting for AC Milan. He has been atrocious. He needs to leave AC Milan. He's on the bench. He's he's useless. He was hitting some nice scores and with all round scores when he hit a goal or assist, he was hitting some good ones. And I thought I needed to pick up some under twenty three super rares who I could afford, which was really hard um, to like bolster my under twenty three rare pro side. And he's just been a disaster. I think I paid way over the odds for him. Um, One thousand six hundred. Um, Sale makers. If he gets a move in the summer to like a crappy league, oh yeah, I've made a made a loss on him. But such is life. We can't win them all, or we'd all be millionaires. So yeah, that was my midfield roster, and now we get onto the forwards. Musa Diaby. Wow, 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 wow. What a purchase he was. Um, probably about a year ago, I think. Uh, forwards. Get rid of these. Uh... So, Moussa Diaby, 11 months ago. What did I pick him up for? Let's get rid of these now. If you're still here, make sure you're subscribed. I'm hoping this video is going to be quite in intriguing, actually. So leave in the comments if you're liking this. Um, sort of an explanation about my whole team. Uh, let's have a look in to my Moussa Diaby price. 0 0.32, so seven about 600 quid at the time. And I just need an under-23 rush striker. This was uh, so long ago. Um, but he has been an animal. And you watch him, he's he's rapid. He's electric. And he's been one of the best performing under-23 uh, forwards in the game. So he really has exploded in price. Um, I love him. I don't think he'll, he'll drop from there unless he gets an injury. So he's vital in my under-23 sides. Malin was part of the Gavi gate. Um, <coughs> he, I needed an international striker who's an under-23 who's got utility. I just thought, he's everything that I want. I mean, look at these scores. Even when he doesn't hit anything, he's got a good all-round score for a forward, which is quite rare to come by as well. So that's why he ended up in the team. Great, great purchase. And I'm hoping he's going to start for Netherlands for the years to come. Maratta. Needed a Spain striker. He's been in and out of the Spain team. He's actually, as much stick as he gets, a very good SO5 scorer. Um, and I think I, he hasn't really changed from the 700 quid mark. And I think that's what I got him for way back. Now, so I've made a bit of money, but that was from a while back again. Um, but yeah, a funny one, Maratta. He's sort of got a pace in my heart. Everyone hates him, but I think he's good. Osman was one of my favourites. I love this bloke. It's a shame he was out for so long. Um, he got a bad injury. He is so good. So young. So good. What did I pick him up for? Um, I sent a, another Yuzichi uh, and 0.62 at the time. So I did pay quite a lot. But again, he's so scarce. There's not many of him. Because Napoli cards, I don't know if they haven't got the license for Napoli or something. Um, but he is, yeah, worth 1.3 now, rightly so. An amazing striker. Do -do 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 -do. And then Araujo was part of Gavi Gate as well. So I bought Malin, Delit, and Araujo. Um, he scored within the first 25 minutes of the MLS season. I thought he was going to be a monster this season. 
He is going to be a monster this season. And then he pulled his hamstring. And he was my only forward I had in my MLS team. So that's why I had to pick up Prisbolkio or whatever his name is. Um, he was also picked up for the special weekly side, which you needed a below an average of 50 or 45, whatever it was. Um, he failed in that as well. But he's a nice backup to have for Araujo while Araujo is out um, for my two MLS teams. Milik's been really disappointing. I thought he'd have a really good season for Marseille this season. But he has played, performed well in the midweeks, but hasn't performed well apart from that. Don't really know what's going on with him. Um, he's sort of youngish for striker as well, so he's got lots of utility left. I'm hoping he leaves um, because I do, I do think he's a good player. Um, Tyler Wolf was a mad one. I knew nothing about him, couldn't find anything about him. I had a bit of spare reef in my account. He was on. I don't know why. I was just looking through the um, through the market that was up at the time and just picked him up for three hundred and seventy three quid. Um, he started the first game and got a good all round score, and I think he started that game. Um, so he started his first two games. His rare card is now basically the same price as the the. <laughs> The super rare I picked up. So I've made a decent profit on him. The, the four people who've got the super rares are holding him tight to his chest. I think he's worth about two grand now. And I don't really know what to do. Um, because Atlanta, now Araujo's out. They've, they've got a, a heavy team. So I'm half tempted to sell him. But then if he scores or gets an assist or starts hitting a few AAs. Um, like a big 50s or 60s or 70s or 80s. A 17-year-old super round the MLS. He could turn out to be one of like the Jesus Ferrari or whatever his, <laughs> his name is. This lad here. Um, and I could end up having one of these in my hands. And honestly, that's, that's game-changing. That's life-changing money. And it could happen. So I'm going to stick with him. Because there just doesn't seem any point. I could cash it in and go and get another rare player, but... I need to I need to end up having a really good super rare under twenty three to compete um, at the highest level. So yeah, it was a random purchase. That it was quite lucky. Um, Cherky, oh oh, my heart breaks. He is a genuine baller, certified baller, and then he went and got a, a like. I hope it's not career ending. He's got a season ending industry injury. I think he'll leave Leon. He's had all sorts of problems with Leon. They weren't starting him for every reason. I think he's a bit of a bad boy anyway, but he is so, so good. I think he's I think he's unreal. I picked him up for a fair amount. I've made a loss on him. Um is there a put three nine five? Actually, let's see. Again, because he's crashed since then, I probably haven't made an ETH loss. Yeah, I've made a big ETH gain, actually. Um but what was the price back then in 1,300 quid? I've actually still made a profit. I, I honestly think if you can pick him up and wait on him, he's going to be a monster next season, wherever he goes. He'll be like Yigori. Um I'm going to annihilate these names. I'm so bad at pronunciation, but this lad is unbelievable. Um, he's so scarce. Um, but I think he can turn out a bit like this lad. Um... <coughs> And then there's Timothy Ware, another really disappointing one. Um, picked him up because he was an American utility. Um, he got injured, and then he hasn't even been in the team. Um, looked a bit promising, and I just haven't sold him since. I'm sort of hoping he's going to come back, which he's starting to find his fitness again, but a bit of a disappointing one. So that's where the team is at. I think the forwards, I only want to play one in each uh, game anyway, or, or team. Midfielders, I'm fairly happy with. Um, defenders, I've got a lot of. And then I just think, with the seasons coming to the end, I think that Strato Strakoshi, or whatever his name is, I think he's the purchase. And then I've got ETH back behind me. Now, I need your help in the comments uh, on this because I could pick him up. I could pick Luis Diaz up who I think, I don't really understand how he's still this price, because they can't mint any new cards, Liverpool at the moment, 
uh, because we haven't got the license. I think that is very cheap. You look at Salah's price, and yeah, I'm comparing him to Salah because I think he's so good. He's not going to hit the green scores like Salah does. Salah's scores are Salah's price is that. Is he worth four or five times less than Salah? Will this be one of the only opportunities to pick Diaz up? But then I can't go and pick up my keeper. Or can I? How much? How much was I can actually maybe come close to picking both of them up? No, no, nowhere near actually. So Luis Diaz was one of them. The other one I really wanted is Ferran Torres. He's been snapped up off the market, and there aren't many of them. Actually, he's just been listed. Actually, haven't spoke to him yet on Discord. Um, I really want Ferran Torres, but then he, these prices are coming into it because I could pick up Luis Diaz for about eight hundred quid less. But then he's a midfielder over a strike, and I, re I, I need better under twenty three midfielders. <clears throat> but again. Barcelona are in the Europa League, so I think he's going to score really well as well. He took the penalties. His, his shooting hasn't been on form, but when it hits, he's going to be an animal. He also plays for Spain consistently for the World Cup and the in, international utility. I, ju I, ju I really want him. I really want Ferran Torres. So I've got Ferran Torres. I've got Luis Diaz. <clears throat> I've got Strakosia. Whatever his name is, is a keeper. I don't really need a keeper because Haradeki will hopefully stay in Old Finland in the, and then Costa will hopefully find his way into the Portuguese team. So I've got two keepers for when the um, international breaks are on, and hopefully Silison finds his way back into the Netherlands team when he comes back from injury. So what would you do, or is there anyone else that you think of? I've been, I've been looking, I've been searching, I've got. But it's basically 1.3. I'm, I'm swaying towards Ferran Torres because a midfielder um, who can hit scores is hard to come by. Um, not many people will have him as well, so when he performs well, it's quite nice knowing that not many people have him in their teams. Do I stretch the boat out and just go all in on one player or do I go and pick up Luis Diaz and then save 0.4 e and I can go and spend that somewhere else? What would you do? I'm going to leave it at that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what your galleries are like. Let me know what you're pushing for. Peace out. Have a great weekend. I hope you're feeling better than me. See you later.